All right, what's up guys? So to get started today, what I'm working on here is disassembly of the CTSV for a cam. So I ended up going and ordering a Texas Speed Torker V2 cam kit on their Black Friday sale. Like I said, I was going to do, it's taking me long enough. Basically, I'm just taking the car apart. Uh, I'm going to have to pull the bumper, the rad, the oil cooler, move the AC condenser out of the way to get like the cam out and then uh, pull off the intake, the valve covers, um, water pump and all that stuff and the crank pulley. And yeah, so I'm gonna start by taking all that stuff off the car and uh, we'll see how far we get before uh, it actually comes to doing the physical cam swap itself. This stuff is gonna get here Friday. It's currently Wednesday, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. So hopefully there's no shipping delays. I know all the gaskets that I had to put the car back together come on Saturday, but I know I'm not gonna be the point of putting it back together by Saturday. So this might be a couple of day video. So, uh, so far the uh, push button connects work great for taking this thing off quickly. So I'm just gonna get it out of the way here. So with that out of the way, it exposes the whole bash bar, which I think I can keep on. Uh, that shouldn't cause any interference. But next I'm gonna pop the oil cooler off and just kinda swing that out of the way. And then I will move into taking the uh, rad out, the intake out, and uh, basically working my way inward to where it finally gets to the cam. So, gotta get some tools, start undoing some bolts and screws here. All right, so, so far I have the oil cooler disconnected, the power steering cooler, the AC condenser is uh, taken off of the rad here. Rad's still a little warm from when I last drove the car, so I moved the head, I took the intake elbow off here, and then I took coil pack bracket on each side off. As you can see, everything is labeled in bags because it's gonna be very important to keep everything organized. And basically all that done has to be done for the heads um, is take off the valve covers, to get access to the valve springs. Uh, I might pop that one off just to see what it looks like and uh, see how everything looks underneath it there. Should be clean. And then once the rad is cool enough, I'm gonna drain the rad, pull the rad out. I can actually uh, start getting the fans out once I disconnect the upper hose here, but it's still a little warm. And then from there, I'm going to take the belt off, take the water pump off, and then uh, check out the crank pulley about taking that off as well. So let me give you guys an update. I got the rad out. And then the next move was uh, the crank pulley. So I had to use the impact gun, the air gun right there. Thankfully I got that because it's kind of a tight fit even with the AC condenser down there pushed away. And I pulled the ARP crank pulley bolt out. I guess that ARP black finish doesn't hold up uh, over the years being on the front of an engine that's daily driven. but. That guy is out and that leaves my power bond crank pulley down there. Uh, so what I can do now is take the belts off and get that pulley pulled out with a puller. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna use a three jaw. I think that might be the only kind I have. So I'm gonna take a look at the different pullers that I have and go from there to make a decision on what kind of, um, what I'm gonna use basically to get this thing out. All right, guys, it's a couple days later and I was flirting with some serious catastrophic engine failure here and I <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if it came down to it. But basically what happened was I tried using a three jaw puller on my crank pulley, the power bond, after I pulled the ARP bolt out. And what it happened was the tip was a flat top tip, not a like a beveled tip, and it pushed itself into the crank and got stuck. So I had to spend three hours this morning with drills and all this stuff, drilling out a hole in the hardened steel tip in my crank to use an easy out to get it out. So I'm just gonna drop the Snapchat I sent to Polly um, just so you guys can see uh, what it looked like that I just pulled out. So I've come to the conclusion that these are things that just happened to me. Um, Everything's going smooth, getting everything off. Go to pull the crank pulley off. Got the bolt out, no problem. Go to pull the crank pulley out. And the little fucking end of the puller gets stuck in the crank. How sick is that? So I tried getting an extractor, but I don't have an extractor big enough to get in there. Um, and I don't have enough clearance, really, with the AC condenser 
to drill it out. So I'm like kind of getting stuck here. Whether it's gonna be disconnect the AC condenser or maybe put a like bolt in and weld a bolt in there into that little insert so you can twist the insert out. But of course. Sick. We're saved, boy. Now I gotta go get a good puller from the parts store. Get back after taking this thing apart. Whew. Now we're good. I have a better uh, puller on here and I'm basically just cranking this thing off and the crank pulley is sliding right off the crank. And the tip is a pointed tip. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck in the crank. I doubt it after that whole fiasco, but I'm gonna get this thing off. It's just about to let go. And then I'm gonna move forward with continuing disassembly of the front of my motor. So with the water pump off and pretty much just out of the way because the two heater lines are kind of a pain to get off. So I can tuck that well out of the way from where I need to be. It looks like, well, to take the timing cover off, there's just bolts around it. This is the timing cover. Um, it looks like I need to take this bolt out and this bolt out because there's like this metal bracket and support for um, this sensor here. And once that bracket's off, I can unplug the sensor right there and pop it all out. So that's what I'm gonna do next is take that out. And there was still water that poured out from the uh, ports there. So I'm gonna then dry everything off and um, clean out those threads inside of the crank pulley uh, hole just because after all the drilling and stuff that I was doing, and I'm gonna put the crank bolt back in and then uh, take this timing cover off and see what it looks like behind there. I mean, I have an idea because I've watched so many videos online uh, about doing LS cam swaps, but I wanna see for myself, um, kind of just get to know what to expect. And I'm gonna show you guys the package that I got today in the mail. So the car is gonna stay how it is for the rest of the night. And I'm gonna show you what all came in today. So starting off, new timing chain cover. The gasket that goes around the crank. Uh, so it's like the crank seal that goes into the cover. New water pump gaskets. Then I have a new cam plate, the retainer plate here. And I ordered, AR, I have ARP hardware for this, so I didn't get the recessed bolt one. I got the flat one. There's two different options. But basically, it's to replace this seal because um, the OEM one's probably going to be all crushed and gross. So, new seal on the cam plate. Then we got the Texas Speed Torker V2 cam package. Um, so, you know, you got some Texas Speed stickers here. Little Texas Speed lanyard. And then, uh, starting off here, we have... Some push rods, you know, nothing exciting. Just some 7.4 uh, Texas Speed push rods. So they are hardened chromoly. And we have here the dual spring kit. This is Texas Speed's kit as well. They're pack springs, pack dual valve springs. Titanium retainers and then Texas Speed's new integrated uh, seat seal valve seals so it's a pretty neat piece that they have here kind of makes installation a little simpler and then we have the most important piece to the puzzle it's the Torker V2 camshaft crack it open here a little cam card so that's the specs of the torque v2 i went with the 112 lsa and so the 114 i think was the other option uh just for you know a little more chop and then we got our camshaft right here so i'm gonna wait until it's ready to go in to crack it open out of the bag even though uh there's a little hole in the bag there but still <laughs> um it's probably all like it has some kind of lubrication on it um, to protect it but there she is you can kind of see the stamping on there on the end of it so it is ready to go in and oh, we got donald visiting us here 
So it's almost ready to go in. Uh, hopefully we can get it buttoned up maybe this weekend. And it's all happening way quicker than I had anticipated, but I am also extremely impatient. While I'm done for tonight, the next video will have the actual cam install itself. A uh, buddy of mine, Charlie, he works at PSR in Pottstown. It's a speed shop. They do a lot of LS stuff, and he's going to be coming down and giving me a hand with doing the dual valve springs and things like that. The, and pretty much teaching me because it's stuff that I'm not really familiar with and I've never done. And I'd rather have someone that does it regularly uh, help me out. And I think Paulie's going to be coming by too to help as well. And maybe this thing will be chopping by the end of the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like this video. Drop a comment below and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.